Hello, I'm John Shepherd, and in this video I'm going to provide you with four tips which will improve your triple jumping. Great. I'll often get asked on the channel questions relating to how you can distribute your phases, i.e. how you can get a better balance between your hop, step and jump. Well, this all starts in early season. My first tip is to learn the rhythm and to balance your phases. Try to make each one about 30%, 30 to 33%. As you'll see on screen, the phases at the elite level are around that distance. But for a young athlete, trying to get that ratio, that 30, 32% ratio for each phase will create great dividends in the long run. So when you start jumping, try to get those equal thirds. Don't worry about alternate distance, rather worry about distribution of the phase distances, making them pretty equal. Tip two, work and work on your step. As you come out of the hop, you need to swing the free leg away from you and then you need to hold position and then try to lift the thigh even higher to maintain the step length. As you come out of the hop, you need to get your arms in the right place and importantly, your lead leg. That needs to be out in front of you and then you need to be very active on the contact. Lead with the hip, knee and then foot as you make contact into the step and then swing the arms through vigorously as you drive the thigh up and forwards. Okay, this jumper goes a little bit vertical, but you can still see that he's achieving pretty good positions as he goes through his phases. Please note that all I'm saying also applies equally to female jumpers. There are some slight differences in the way they absorb and return force, but trying to get that balance between the phases is crucial for them too. No matter how strong or powerful you are, on each contact, you are going to bend more at the knee. So what I try to get my jumpers to do is to maintain leg length. So even though they're going to bend at the knee, as I've said, we want them to try to keep as tall as they can through the phases and to lead with a long leg into the contact. Indeed, this was something that we were working on with this jumper, trying in particular in his transition from his step to his jump to not lower his hips too much or to resist the forces more. Of course, specific conditioning is crucial when it comes to being able to technically efficiently perform the triple jump. So there are many drills that you can perform to improve both your technical ability and your specific eccentric, concentric and reactive strength. This hopping drill using various height plyometric boxes is a great one for developing the range needed for the hopping action and also developing the power and the resistance to the landings as you can see there the absorption and the reaction qualities required of the triple jumper. In my videos I always mention about eccentric capacity well these are breaking ones where you have to cushion and then ultimately return energy so doing these jumps here where you block the landing will develop this quality. You'll need to build up to the height that you drop down from over time. But as you can see, each of these young athletes is working to their own level of ability. And there are, of course, lots of other drills that you can perform to improve your triple jump technique, power and reactivity. And I'll say more about those in another video. As you may know, I've launched Coach Athlete Memberships on my channel, so I'm going to give you a little snippet of what I'm doing in this particular area by looking at a snippet of a training planning video. To become a channel member, go to the channel's homepage or click on the link at the bottom of this video. Coach and Athlete Member videos are exclusive content. Okay, so I've zoomed in on a, a week, well, Saturday to Saturday. So our first session was this one here, and you can see that there were one, two, three, four, five units. And I decide in 
the build up to the session, just by thinking through in my mind what I want to include in these particular sessions. Now, of course, you can be more prescriptive, but the objective of this session was to build some specific volume and also develop some injury robustness, resilience to injury. So we've got balance and posture drills. That was just an overview of the bits and pieces from one of my recent coach athlete members videos. So do, as I've said, check out the section on the main page of the channel if you're interested in improving your coaching and your performance as an athlete. As usual, thanks for watching and good luck with your training and competition and leave any comments you may have in the section below or through my other social media and stay safe.